How do we live or die together? How do we imagine this in the Roma context? What is our strategies for the togetherness, for the belonging, for the oneness, and not for the individual and subjective and personal strategies? It matters what thoughts think thoughts. It matters what knowledge is known knowledge is. It matters what relations relate relation. It matters what words word words. Uh, this is staying with the troublemaking kin in the Sturul scene uh, by Donna Haraway in 2016. Why we don't have a leading Roma leading curators in these uh, in these uh, in, in institutions? Hello, good afternoon. I'm Hedwig Feijer, Director of Manifesta, and I'm super delighted to announce that Manifesta, the International Foundation, is the initiator of Europe's Nomadic Biennial. And also, for the first time, we initiated a new project called the Western Balkans Project, which is a collaboration between the city of Pristina in Kosovo and more than 12 partners in the Western Balkan due to the opening of our large biennial project this summer, the 22nd of July, 2022. And it lasts for 100 days till the 3rd of October. And what is so unique about this collaboration is that it's the first time that this interregional and interdisciplinary program is being developed bottom-up and in a participatory inclusive way with 12 completely different partners interdisciplinary in the uh, outreach of um, organizing and combining from libraries to site-specific new commissioned artistic works to conferences to research and knowledge development and education projects and an integrational objective of this project is to open up the Western Balkan to create more projects that breaks the confines of isolated cultural infrastructures and networks. This is also part of what Manifesta tries to do and that's especially what we hope this network will achieve. Not only to present it in the array of Manifesta 14 activities, but maybe even to um, sustain after the closing of Manifesta 14 in a post-Manifesta period. Liking architecture and urban planning, human rights, arts and culture, Manifesta 14 Western Balkan project proposes this kind of plethora of diverse activities in 2021, when we already started in 2022. Ranging, as I said, from cultural in-depth research, expert or conferences, exhibitions, but also like uh, other far more interdisciplinary events across the region. And this partner network, which is very much uh, promoting the polit politics of care uh, between the different communities in the Western Balkan, also to stimulate a much more cross broader network where knowledge production and local expertise can thrive. And this is mostly towards this kind of uh, transition from Manifesta not only to focus on exhibition making but also to focus on knowledge, re, uh, knowledge production, research and long-term collaboration um, between projects. The activities uh, between in the development uh, process resulted in close collaboration between Manifesta and nine partners from the Western Balkan. Like the post-conflict, I'll give you a few, the post-conflict Research Center Sarajevo, Thermokis in Pristina, Museum of Contemporary Art of Mocha in Skopje, Gwendra Harabel in Tirana, uh, the Institute Pogorica, NGO Active in Kosovo, Maidan DEO Hestia Belgrade, Kosovo Architecture Foundation in CAF in Pristina, the Institute of Contemporary Art, the ICA in Sofia, and the European Roma Institute for Arts, Iriac and Culture in Berlin and in Belgrade. 
many of the projects will take place, of course, in their own environment, in the different cities in the Western Balkan, but some projects are also taking place in Manifest 14 Biennial Parkour, such as the Iriak uh, project with the MoMA Roma um, library, in the iconic um, library of Pristina. So, as may be many of you know, this Manifesto 14 Western Balkan project has awarded a large grant of the Western Creative Europe by the European Union. And I think specifically what really is our focus and ambition is that this project can continue as a long-term light uh, Western Balkan 2.0 network. And especially for some of these partners, I think it would be fantastic um, that this can continue within a kind of a regional setting. So I already mentioned the Roma Mobile Library as one of in presented in the most iconic building in Pristina, the National Library, and some of the other projects like in Tirana, in, in the Sarajevo, in Belgrade, in Skopje, in Sofia. So super fantastic and super honored to be able to showcase this. And let me know how we are uh, able to continue. As you know, we are opening up for 100 days. At the end of Manifesto in October, we're going to do a huge assessment and evaluation. And I'm uh, not doubting to also include you in our evaluation. But first, let's focus on the opening of some of these projects. Many success. Again, very honored and thanks so much. Uh, ERIAC uh, joined the partnership uh, with Manifesta 14 in a Western Balkans project in order to ensure that uh, Roma culture and Roma audience are adequately represented in uh, this important biennial, and by facilitating spaces for deepening the understanding of different cultures and providing room for participative and creative encounters. Um, Manifesta 14 may, in our opinion, play a pivotal role in connecting people and catalyzing positive change in the Western Balkans uh, and beyond. Uh, we are hoping that this is not a one-time and ad hoc cooperation, but a long-time partnership that is taking root in these initial discussions and in these pilot cooperations. It matters what thoughts think thoughts. It matters what knowledge is known knowledge is. It matters what relations relate relation. It matters what words word words. Uh, this is staying with the troublemaking kin in the Sturul scene uh, by Donna Haraway in 2016. How do we relate to living in symbiosis in a damaged planet in a nature that is all of ours, in the understanding that we are one. Uh, these are all natural narratives in the Roma context, but how do we connect uh, the future of our prosperity for all of us uh, in the Anthropocene and beyond? Uh, the very first question is how do we relate to the meta-narratives, the narratives uh, below the visible or on the peripheries, and how do we relate to the Haraway quote ourselves? But what I wanted to, to, to talk today, uh, it's also the importance of the space that is given to speak about our, uh, our culture and to, to, to tell our stories. Because uh, there are, it's a limited uh, uh, number of institutions that in, involve uh, Roma arts and cultures in, 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 in their activities and, and, and so on. And when it comes to, to these uh, uh, initiatives, it's, it's only uh, targeted to the donors. So we, we don't need only donors to, 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 to offer the space, but we need also governments, like local governments, the governments of the res, uh, respective countries to, to, to offer this uh, space because uh, uh, the Roma arts and culture was part of, of the European culture since centuries and is still there. But now we are in, in a moment to unveil these, these cultures and to, to promote them and to give the possibility to cultivate them. And uh, this is also a good possibility that um, Manifesta uh, uh, was very open to, to collaborate and also the, the document and, and there are also some other uh, 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 
initiatives and uh, uh, institutions that um, uh, pro uh, give the, 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 the space, but that's not, uh, that's not still uh, enough. I mean, we need, we need to create the state that space that uh, uh, offers the continuation. So uh, th this is how, how, how I want also to, to, to answer to, to, to this. First, we need a kind of infrastructure while we, 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 we speak about our, our stories. Events like this, but also obviously like Manifesta, is, I, I believe, also an invitation to individuals to also take up initiatives on their own. And I think it's amazing that we have two artists also on the panel, that it shows also that commitment to speaking with your own voice and not necessarily following others or having to conform, but really having uh, that platform, as you say, to really be able to um, to also show the difference. Because I think what happens very often is that there is this sense of uniformity, that everything would be one because it's one community, right? I mean, if, if we're talking specifically where we are today in Ariac, but there is also that diversity within, for example, the Roma community. And I think that's the beauty of that community too. We, we saw only the uh, outside perspective regarding uh, our history and culture. I came here from, uh, uh, from Kassel, from Documenta, and there um, I saw something that I very liked. We are, we are going to show there that not what the others expect to see, but what we want to, 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 to show, show to them. There are many uh, 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 artists that I admire, that their work is very uh, uh, great, and it will be shocking, I think, for, for the, the audience, for the others, to see that uh, 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 something that is introduced or, or stories that will be told from a Roma perspective. There is uh, one note that uh, really stuck with me and this is uh, how we tell stories that destabilize uh, uh, the power and also majoritarian narratives. And uh, you are sitting here because you are experts uh, of this strategy. Uh, it would be uh, really nice to hear, uh, you know, what uh, from your uh, personal histories you can uh, you can show us. Uh, we know that, for example, May 16 is relevant uh, because uh, once Roma started writing Roma history, we discovered that the history of the Holocaust is not the history of of victimhood. We have agency. Uh, we have the power to resist, the power to survive. We are fighting back, revolting. The only one uprising is connected to the Roma people. We realize that there are many stories of escapes, heroic saving of each other, children, and other victims of the Holocaust. So uh, this writing, rewriting of the story, was very essential for uh, creating a different narrative and fighting the majority narrative of, uh, you know, the, for example, the Holocaust history, uh, as it was taught to us, not as it's written by us. So my question is, from your own experiences, uh, um, you know, what, what examples would you share with us uh, in uh, these narratives that create agency? I don't have a special recipe, like, you know, to, to share, but I, I want to bring a personal, two personal uh, uh, actions and stories that I, I did my, myself. Um, in, in, uh, in, uh, in Albania, we have, a, a, when I was in primary school, every Monday we started the class uh, uh, singing the Albanian anthem. Um, um, uh, before starting the classes. And for me was, uh, uh, in the beginning I didn't know, I mean, my, my mother tongue was Romani, so I started to learn Albanian in the school. And was interesting for me that, and what I did together with my family in, in my school, in the same school, we started to start a uh, uh, Monday with both, uh, uh, with Romani anthem and with Albanian one. It was the first uh, uh, school and there were like uh, six or seven years ago and now on, on, in all those schools uh, that are in the, the city of Fier and some others, they are organizing for 8th of April the same, uh, the same thing. They start uh, the, uh, uh, with the symbol and cal they organize acti cultural activities uh, uh, regarding the Roma, I mean, the Roma culture and history, which was nothing in our, our, our school. At the same time, regarding this, I wanted to, 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 to share with you a, a, a work that I, 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 I did 
uh, which is the swallow's nest but I, that I use it as a metaphor. I install it in public institution to speak for cultures uh, like our culture that are not part of public institution. Because although we are uh, living for years, for example, uh, in, in our countries, we are not represented. If you come, for, uh, for example, in Albania, you don't see nothing regarding Romani culture in the National Museum. Oh, so this is also in, uh, in other uh, 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 countries as well. I mean, you have small initiatives, but that does, does not prove nothing. So, I mean, I'm still in what I said in the uh, uh, opening of the discussion. We, we have a lot to offer, but we need the space. We need the space to, to, to talk about ourselves. Although, I mean, we were part of the, this European culture where we took and we, we gave. Uh, we gave and uh, we, how to say, we interacted. But the most important that it's that we need now is the, 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 the space. Have a personal story and have a personal initiative and go for it. I think that there is no other recipe except for be ambitious, be curious. I think, um, I think some things that I was just writing up is that take the space. I mean, I think, you know, the space is there. You have public space, you have online spaces. I understand that there is always a more formalistic way of thinking when it comes to representation and how you want to show stuff. But think out of the box, because this is also really what really works today. It, 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 I think you can be very catchy if you own the medium that you're using to really appropriate it for what you want to say and to really condition your own voice instead of constantly fo following a sort of an exhibition cube format or, I don't know, you know, uh, creating some sort of a platform. You are that platform. And I think that's great about this. I'm actually really happy to have, to have heard this because it's, um, I think it's that sort of enrichment. And I'll tell you my, my personal example. So obviously in the introduction, you know, there's, there's the Prince Klaus Fund and there's, you know, the Netherlands, but I'm from the Balkans. So the reason why I'm here also is because there is a personal commitment to it. I grew up in, from different backgrounds and um, I'm sure there is Romani when you dig in. Um, but there is definitely differences in terms of cultures in my family and that was always a problem where I came from, although it was in Macedonia, which is generally seen as sort of more liberal in terms of minorities and communities. Uh, back in the day when I grew up, it wasn't. So, um, so what I did was, obviously, I, I've been living in the Netherlands now, but I realized I wanted to do an initiative which I thought was important for rectifying a wrong when I grew up. Um, and the wrong that I grew up was that I grew up always feeling very different because I was different. I'm, I'm gay and growing up in Macedonia at the time when I was sort of openly gay to my family and my friends, it was a tough job. So it started from there, the idea of what can you do to give back to a community, not necessarily LGBT related as much as just the difference, the feeling alienated, feeling like you don't belong. And I'm sure that asking anybody in this room, I'm sure all of you will have had that experience regardless of what social status you're coming from what ethnic diversity you have or not um, so uh, a year and a half ago I decided to take up the initiative in my own hands and do something and I set up what's now called the vid foundation for photography and it's a platform that supports young visual storytellers in the Balkans specifically um, for them to really tell their own stories so it's really inviting people to come up with their own ideas and pitch these ideas. It's, uh, and then we select one, one winner that's a financial winner to really boost also financially, because I think finance is also really important. But there's also two prizes which are mentorship prizes. So we then couple these young visual storytellers with, um, yeah, depending on what they want to do, with the appropriate mentor to really help them for six months to work intensively. And I think you know, it, it, it might not be the best way to do something or to create representation and give people the opportunity to really uh, uh, sort of um, amplify their voice, but it's, it was a way based on what I knew and the experience I have and the network I have to really sort of bring that closer to the Balkans. But at the same time, always daring to fail. And I think that's what's beautiful about your, your stories. I think your brother's story, you know, he took that leap of faith because it is dangerous. I mean, it can feel very daunting and dangerous when you do something that's counter-narrative in a way. 
and when you're going to be standing out and doing something which probably society is not going to see as, as, as okay or as good or as positive. So I think daring to make a mistake and daring to just be different is something that I would definitely encourage. We need to have Roma leading curators, not only just the co-curators and so on, but it's the thing that you say, to see, I mean, to see it in a, in a, from a Roma perspective. Of course, we need to think out of the box. Yes, of course we need to think because we will not, uh, uh, we will not think what's, what's only in, in, into, in, into this because otherwise we will, uh, we will put ourselves into the periphery. Yeah. If you have opportunity, just make it to be BAM. It's uh, amazing how we are already speaking about how to uh, empower storytellers. Uh, you know, you already addressed infrastructure and you're excited to talk uh, uh, more about empowering storytellers, but the arch of this discussion after your subjective experiences uh, requires another angle. So if you allow me, I will go back to, again, uh, Manifesta and Donna Haraway and also May 16th. Haraway and also Manifesta explains that uh, in a real uh, radical change to reconfigure our relations to Earth and to ourselves requires, instead of the autopoiesis and the self-making, we need to have the trouble of imagining living together. Just like May 16th was about living or dying together. You know, how do we live or die together? How do we imagine this in the Roma context? What is our strategies for the togetherness, for the belonging, for the oneness, and not for the individual and subjective and personal strategies? And uh, I believe that this is exactly the Stulucine and the Anthropocene uh, idea that Manifesta is playing with. You know, how to, how to imagine living and dying together on a damaged earth, and will this prove, this, this idea of imagining this prove more conducive to the kind of thinking that would provide a means to building more livable lives? How do we think about prosperity for all of us? I mean, there's a lot of fancy words in that statement. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to sort of not use fancy words. I'm going to use sort of more, I'm going to endeavor to use more simple words because it, it, then it sort of tends to come more from the heart. But for me, that is, and I think the most radical thing you can do is to be yourself, truly yourself. Um, and I think that's why artists are dangerous because if they wouldn't be, why would they be imprisoned? Why would they be prosecuted? So there's something that the smart people that run our societies understand about that risk in terms of cultural expression, identity, and arts. Um, so I think what happens very often is when we talk about communities or minorities or you know, underexposure or et cetera, there is the tendency that the majority community will come up to you and say, hey, what can I do for you? Equally, funders will do that. But you need to sort of turn that around and say, no, what can I do for you? Because you don't get it. The, the point about having curators who are Roma and not having, in fact, uh, a lot of artists that have the right exposure, that have all the, the context and the, 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 the sort of the network needed, right? Um, it really is a question of not really what they can do for us, but what we can do for them. Because I think educating people and just, as I said, for me also, just this event, I think is really important because you have to build on the, well, first of all, you build on yourself, obviously, in your self-expression, but you also build on the community of, of, of allies that you create. And I think that allyship is very important because then it no longer becomes a question between us and them but it does remain a sort of an increased community of everything together. And I think that's in terms of sort of what you're talking about in you know, Manifesta and, 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 and Anthropocene, etc. I think it fundamentally comes down to radicalizing the self-expression to an extent where it really enables people to have a comfort zone to be who they really are without any fear. My thinking is how to uh, through art uh, uh, and through different narratives uh, um, 
provoke majority that uh, change their, uh, their thoughts about uh, Roma people uh, who are actually, um, I don't know, uh, who they are living in a, a dehumanizing uh, environment. Okay, I am here where I am. I am a PhD student and I am uh, like, I uh, live in, uh, with others in a multicultural, intercultural, not intercultural, but multicultural environment. But what about others? Okay, what I can do, like uh, Roma women uh, who approach this level, what I can do for my people who are still there? Where are they? Like artists, like journalists. So I can, in my point of view, I can make reportage who rep represent different narratives about Roma people, for example. I, I also think that your work with the youth is extremely important. I was hoping that uh, you will share some of those strategies of how you create this idea of we are one when you are working together with disadvantaged youth. And then the bigger question, of course, of this, uh, the beautiful words that I quoted from Haraway really is how do we understand, uh, you know, our oneness with the majoritarian uh, strategies. And to you, Sad, as well, you know, you have many artworks who speak about our, our knowledge about the universe, our Roma traditions in the contemporary art context. Like you take clay and you show the ways that they were applied traditionally in the Roma context and share this knowledge and contribute this knowledge through the channels of contemporary art and contemporary art generous to the majority starting from uh, political uh, uh, strategies all the way to beauty uh, and uh, facial uh, expertise. So, you know, I, it's really important, I believe, that uh, you use contemporary art to channel your knowledge towards, uh, uh, towards uh, the oneness, towards all of us. I, I cannot say like that whether we need, a, 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 because the question is like very strong, like, but with whether we need a radical uh, action to, to, I mean, to, to do something in this togetherness and so on. But we are actually doing in our, day, our, daily, our daily life as Roma. Uh, we are uh, giving and taking, I mean, uh, uh, con contribution uh, between uh, uh, one another. And also regarding, for example, my, 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 my work, I mean, the work that uh, I, I, I do, uh, and you, you quoted one, one of them uh, that I, uh, uh, I use this special kind of mud and taking the position in the government where, uh, 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 and the fear, that I, internal fear that I had always that once I get this position, what I'm going to do? Uh, am I going to be continue the same activism, or uh, am I getting uh, uh, I'm going to adapt to 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 the to the system? So I, I'm doing this uh, this work, and one of the women that uh, is on that uh, that performance is my mother. And who else be, beside your family wants you to become cleaner? I mean, so. They, we take this kind of shishik, and they are in my office, and they cover me in in that uh, kind that kind of mud as a mean to keep me safe. So, but the word mudding in in the political uh, 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 language in Albania is used as something insulting. So I'm using this kind of mud uh, for purifying, and so to giving the message. So although I am here in this institution, that doesn't mean that I will adapt in this con uh, on the comfortability that the, the, in the institution says, because the mindset is once you go there, that means that you're gonna uh, adapt. So, uh, uh, but as I am coming from, from, uh, from the, the, the very grassroots, I mean, I come from a, a village, I come from a Roma family, which is not, not rich and even not middle, it's not middle class, it's a poor. I mean, with the full, all the meaning of that. So, and I'm going to this institution, I think I already sent a message, I mean, to, to, to the society that I, I live uh, uh, there. And also this, this work talk, talks, uh, talks about it. So I am making this culture part of, 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 of the others. 
And, and also, for example, the other word that I want to mention here is I don't have borders to protect, which is a, a, a word wa that was conserved in Roma families. And I'm taking this uh, uh, sentence and, and I give it to offer it to everyone to make it theirs. So uh, taking into uh, the account in the political situation that, that in every country is the war in Ukraine and also on. So um, we are having a role, we are contributing in interacting uh, between uh, in this togetherness uh, that we are, we are living and what uh, uh, you, I mean, you are talking about. It's not just a question of, sort of speaking out and asking people, you know, what can I do for you? It's a combination of things. And I think it also, the, the, it's also a chicken and egg story. Where do you really start? And I think that um, it doesn't always mean that if you come from a certain background, you can't make it. And I think it's great that you are that living example. Uh, but I think it's also amazing that people can look up to you, for example, and everybody who is more actively involved in any issue they believe in, and see an example of who they can become. And I think in representation, association to somebody like that is important. Whether it's tone of skin, whether it's name that you, you have, whether it's the way that you speak about what you believe, I think you guys generally, both of you or three of you that are here, and, and I think continuing to sort of give a platform to people to be able to really show their representation, affiliation, but also the invitation to actually be participative in the work that you do, to really engage with the community is important because it demystifies also this idea of, oh, them and us. But I think really, I think that's why I think it's also a lot about what can you do for the majority that really has that mindset. And I think that that's something that whether you like it or not, we, people are educated that way from a very young age and that's the way that you taught to think about differences and otherness. So I think, um, yeah, I think it's also, I, I think the fact that people can also recognize themselves in, 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 in good examples, in successful examples, in, in um, um, inspirational examples is something that will make people to think differently about just who they are and, and what they can do. What should we do about that? Do you have any idea how we can fix that? How we can put some Roma role in some Serbian or Albanian or Macedonian film, but like we can represent that Roma are equal with others? For example, like Roma doctors or Roma some business manager or something like that? I, uh, I started a research regarding Romani people in the, uh, in the cinema in Albania, which was never published and still uh, ne never finished. But during the process and the interviews in the archives, uh, the film archives, I have understood a lot. Uh, uh, but we, we need this kind of research that to, to, to be done. Why? Be why? Because always has been seen as a, like a, in an exotic way, a stereotypic way, and so on. It's also because the people that are involved in, in the movies are not Roma. I would say high, hire Roma people to do the jobs, and and you know yeah. you invest in that because it's not. Of course, it's easy to say. It's like it's always the case with minorities. It's like yeah, you can't find anyone. Oh, there's nobody really that's that good. There's always somebody who's willing to do the job much better and work much harder because they know that it's going to be an opportunity. So I think it's, it's also a question of taking the leap of faith and um, actually trusting your vision as if, if it's you, for example, that wants to bring this together, trust your own vision and trust the people around you. I think uh, we generally have a sense of approaching things with a lot of distrust and that's how you come to the stereotype because you don't really talk openly, you don't participate. And I think there's also consultants you can hire. I mean, I understand, you know, if it's, some, if it's something very specific where it's difficult to find, I still believe you can find. I mean, this region is, is such a mixed region and there's it's very easy to go up beyond a border to find somebody else, although mentally that might sound very far. I think there's different ways how you can combine that. And at the end of the day, it would absolutely, I feel, add value to what you're doing. And it will be appreciated on both sides of that spectrum, not just within the Romani community, for example, 
but because it creates a different understanding, it's what puts you in the map as an artist, if it's an artwork or whatever. But uh... There is a lot of talk uh, in the last 30 years what Roma need. And I usually say Roma situation is like a beaten body in an emergency. <clears throat> so you bring uh, somebody beaten all over the body to the emergency, so whatever you do is good. Whatever you do on, on the body, it's useful. But what is the core? What is the most useful? This is what the conversation has to be about. Because when we start listing needs, it's endless. Nobody can finish the needs. So we don't need uh, the psychology of needy people. And I'm fascinated uh, by what you said about how can we turn the conversation? What do you need from us? And I think that conversation doesn't happen. Uh, because of a, a certain, I would say, mentality that has developed among the movements, human rights, assistentialist, social movements, uh, social provision, projects, and so on, that is all about the need. Uh, and the area of culture is, I think, the most fascinating because we have gin given already so much and we will continue to give because culture works in that way. It's exchange, constant. I'm sorry to bring economics to, to my question, but in economics, and especially in the area of trade, there is a concept called competitive advantage. So we should ask ourselves, what is the competitive advantage of Roma vis-a-vis -vis those that live with us? This is where the, your question might have an answer. So what is the, our competitive advantage? What we do better than others, so others have to take it, even if they hate it. They have to. It, they might have stereotypes around us. I mean, Hannah Har Arendt wrote a lot about prejudice in politics as the root of totalitarian regimes and neo-Nazis. And she speaks about not stereotype. She speaks about prejudice in politics. We, this is where stereotypes become dangerous. Mm -hmm. But what is the stereotype about what we have as a competitive advantage? Arts and culture. And I think there is no question about that. So question might be turned if we practice the dialogue that you perfectly put your finger on. What would you like us to do for you? It, it reminds me. Uh, Two or three years ago, the manager of Pink Floyd, previous manager of Pink Floyd, came in Albania, and he started to register to this Saze traditional music, which was done only by Roma and by Egyptians. But back that time, because I come from that village that this music somehow spread on, the Roma were beaten if they were playing this this music. I mean, on the and it was like Talava today. It had a lot of Talava. Uh, it had a lot of stereotypes at that time, and now this uh, this guy comes and registers and does some uh, some uh, activities with that. And Roma are are zero mentioned as a contributor and uh, the one that who who did this music. And this is shown as only as a, like, for example, like Albanian traditional music, and there is not mentioned the contribution of the of our, our people. So we were already there. I mean, we need the dialogue. I mean, that to to, to happen. But also a little reflection on the the media uh, in the movies and so on. I think there is needs to be changed also the approach, because always when we are invited in televisions, we are invited only as Rome to speak only for Roma issues. I mean, I, and this is for me uh, uh, not, not, not right and has somehow has to be changed because we, I am, maybe I cannot talk good in English about politics, but in Albania I can talk about politics and the art scene and so on. So also we need uh, to, uh, to, to be invited also some like uh, experts to talk about uh, issues that do not necessarily belong to our, our, uh, our origin. So, I mean, this is like, we are framed always into a box that it's, okay, we have those, we have them only for that. Do you agree with the, no, no, with a, the competitive advantage? Question. This is how you slap somebody with their own hand. Huh? No, no, it's a, no, no, it's a very good question. It's a good question because that's what happens when you're put in the situation to speak on behalf. 
I'm not the regular person that's on the street in the sense that I also come from a minority. I understand that, that it, it's a different sort of composition of my life, obviously, as an identity. Um, but it is a starting point that what I always wanted to do is uh, take the Vid Foundation for Photography. We have an annual open call where we ask for visual storytellers all around the world, but it really specifically focuses on people who come from any sort of minority. And to this day, there's never been a Roma person who's applied. And I would love for that to happen because it's a way also to bring that story closer. So what you can do, I think, is really promote that, and it's not self I'm sorry that it sounds maybe shamelessly self-promoting, but it is an opportunity because I think it's so important to bring that voice out into a domain that will just be very different than the usual domains where indeed you're put forward like, oh, tell us something about Roma issues. No, this will be a voice that you yourself cho choose to say, what do you really care for? And where does that come from? And it could come from the fact that you come from a certain background or you were brought up in a different language and now studying a different language. There's so many things that we don't understand about the society we live in, but also because it's a taboo. So I think my, my question is, how can we jointly demystify and de-taboo so many things that just commonplace in our societies? But we're blind to it because we, we see it as a threat instead of an enrichment. So I think that, um, again, I'm not going to speak on behalf of anybody because I don't consider myself to come from a majority. And so, uh, no, no, it's a good question, but it's an answer to a good question. No, absolutely, but I don't consider myself coming from a majority and it's sometimes very difficult for people to grasp if they see what you look like because yeah. very often there's that sort of obviously stereotype and I had this discussion once, for example, in the US when I was I had to talk about something and I told them that I come from a minority. I was about to get shot. They were like, what that, you're a white male, whatever. They assumed I was straight, which I was like, but whatever. And it's so... It's also deceiving, and I think that uh, it's an invitation to also look at things differently and go beyond your own stereotype. But again, this is something that's at the core of the education that we get huh, in, in this environment. So I think that there's, there's a lot to be rectified in that sense to also recognize what it is and, and constantly correct yourself as moving forward. So I think exposure to things, I think invite more people to be part of events like this. Um, people who, who, who potentially are your allies, but they're simply too ignorant to know it.